As you know, Mike was introduced to us on Thursday morning, and more information about him can be found on page uh, nominating three of the commissioner's handbook. And so I'd ask that uh, giving the seconding speech will be T.E. Um, Michael Flake. Thank you very much. My name is Michael Flake. I'm a teaching elder in the Mid-Atlantic Presbytery. Before I begin, I did want to just announce who had won the cars. <laughs> the winners. This is a totally random drawing. You won't believe this. Jeff Jeremiah and Gordon Miller. Congratulations. Oh, wait, 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 there's a comma. I'm sorry, the winners are Jeremiah, Jeff, and Miller Gordon. I apologize. Four first names on one stage. It's good. Well, it's a great privilege for me to be able to uh, place in a nomination to second the nomination of Mike Moses to be the moderator-elect of our General Assembly. Uh, this is a, a high, a great honor for me, and I can give you a timeline to explain a little bit of why. In the 19, early 1980s, as the EPC was in its infancy, so was I. I was born in 1983. In 1988, my family helped start an EPC church in Memphis, Tennessee. That church was planted out of Second Presbyterian and was, still is called Hope, Hope Church. Uh, not long after that, Mike and Angie were in seminary. They were in L.A., and they began to pray that God would lead them to a church where they could learn church planting in hopes of one day planting a church of their own. And they added, this is the desire of their heart, that it could be somewhere east of the Mississippi River. If you take I-40 out of L.A., the first city you will hit as you go over the Mississippi River is Memphis, Tennessee. And in 1993, Mike and Angie came to Memphis. He served as an assistant and associate pastor at Hope for those five years. He got to work with who I believe to be maybe the most wonderful ruling elder in our denomination, my mom. Uh, <laughs> For five years, so Mike, uh, I've spent many a VBS over with Mike, holding onto our ankles and knocking each other over in the grass. It's a great game. I'll show it to you during a break. <laughs> he was my uh, youth leader. I babysat his kids, and then in 1997, they left to go to North Carolina, and in 1998, started Lake Forest Church. In 2002, I became a freshman, a first-year student at Davidson College, and at current uh, Lake Forest Church was meeting within walking distance of the Davidson College campus and rented space. And so from 2002 to 6, uh, helped Mike in pioneering. I helped Mike in pioneering some of the uh, staff for youth and then came back in 2009 after seminary to pioneer uh, staff for missions and then for multi-site with Lake Forest Davidson. So the Flakes and the Moseses have done a lot of life together for a long time. And it's great to have so many new folks in the EPC. We kind of feel like, as strange as it's going to be coming from me, I kind of feel like an old-timer around here. <laughs> and so it's a great honor to be able to place his name, uh, to second his name, I apologize, to be the moderator-elect. And what I can tell you about Mike, having known him for a long time in a lot of different roles, are two things. Number one, he is a great exegete. Uh, exegete is one of these great seminary words that nobody else uses. What it means is uh, he mines for meaning. He, he develops a deep understanding of things. He's a great exegete of the scriptures. We would expect nothing less, but a truly remarkable many of the things he will mine out of the scriptures. He's also a great exegete of the culture. He has a deep understanding of the culture around us, the culture of the Lake Norman area is where we do ministry. We will do well to have a great exegete of the scriptures and the culture as our moderator-elect and then as our moderator. The second thing I can tell you about Mike is he is an encourager. It's this curse of a teaching elder that everything has to start with the same letter, right? He's an exegete and he's an encourager. But he's a wonderful encourager. Encouraging is, I don't know, this is presumptuous, maybe his top spiritual gift. He is an amazing encourager. He is a rabid fan. Some people might say an annoying fan at times. But he is a wonderful fan. He loves to encourage. And I'll call his shot for him if I know anything about Mike. He is going to encourage each of us to find our role in being either a parent, partner, or patron in church planning. Because that's sort of his thing. It's sort of up in his bones. He can't do anything else about it. 
but he's not going to like uh, run after us, you know, with a whip or something. He's going to encourage us into becoming a denomination about transformation through parenting, partnering, and being patrons of church planning initiatives. So it is with uh, my highest praise and a great honor to, to second the nomination for our moderator-elect, the Reverend Dr. Michael Van Moses. I'd ask uh, for a motion that nominations be closed. All right. Any discussion? Sent you ready to vote. All those in favor of assuring that Michael wins this vote signify so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right. The nominations are closed. I sent you ready to vote. All in favor of this wonderful young man being our next moderator. Stand up and say, thank you, Michael. Done. Michael, come up here and talk to us. It's Saturday. I'll try to be quick. Um, I am uh, I'm honored and, and deeply humbled at the same time. Um, I love the EPC. And I so admire uh, all of the, the folks that I've been with just this week. The ministry that's going on in so many of our member churches, I just love all the unique uh, beauties of the various brides of Christ that are represented in this assembly. Uh, in particular, I was struck this week, for me the high point was a moderator's prayer service. The vulnerability and the willingness and along with in the company of our brothers and sisters to elevate our places of hurt and need and brokenness for prayer together uh, was profound and moving to me. So this is a great honor. And I'm awfully glad that there's an entire year until the next assembly to give us all a lot of time to forget the skillful moderation and the surprising wit of Gordon Miller. Yeah, I, wow, wow. Um, you really have done a super job, and I'm looking forward to working with you with Jeff and, and the office. Um, uh, yesterday, after one of our complicated discussions here on the floor, I was playing around on my phone, I will admit, but what I was doing was assembly business. I was downloading onto my Kindle Robert's Rules of Orders for Dummies. Um, <laughs> that's true. It's actually on here. Thank you for the brother who told me that that existed. Um, that's, that was written just for me. Um, I love the EPC. I actually chose it for positive reasons uh, over 20 years ago now. Um, uh, reasons, frankly, represented really well and best today by Bill Cato's words. Brother, I appreciated that. Well, I don't know, I'm not sure where you're sitting there you are. On behalf of the Judicial Commission, thank you for speaking again to who we are uh, as a denomination. So I, I wasn't leaving anything. I wasn't running from some place or some other bad experience. I ran toward a positive vision of, of who this denomination aspires to be and still aspires to be. I showed up to Fuller Seminary in my early 20s as a parachurch Christian who pretty much only cared about evangelism, getting people over the line. Uh, and while there, because of God's Word and my engagement, the privilege of doing that for three years of just engaging God's Word, I became Reformed before I ever knew there, that was a word or a system. Um, seriously, uh, I, I told you I was just like a parachurch guy before that. I fell in love by engaging uh, the New Testament with the centrality of the church and God's affection and God's mission. And Angie and I committed our lives to uh, serving in the church. Um, I also became convinced that the New Testament teaches uh, uh, that it's biblical for churches to be in vital connection with one another in mutual submission for purposes of doctrine, leadership behavior, and faithfulness to mission. And so we committed ourselves, and we prayed at the end of, of seminary that uh, uh, we said, Lord, lead us to a church east of the Mississippi uh, in a denomination 
that is broadly reformed, historically orthodox, and evangelical without still being caught up in a bunch of fundamentalist controversies from the 20th century. And we prayed that. And when a few days later, I walked into Fuller's job uh, on the job board and saw an EPC church in Memphis with an opening, and I, I went further and read the brochure on the EPC and the vision. Frankly, it was one of the more miraculously uh, spectacular answers to prayer in my entire life. Uh, and I learned about specificity in prayer. When we prayed east of the Mississippi, we meant North Carolina and Virginia. And we assume God was wise enough to pick up on that. Um, but he was teaching us to be more specific in our communication. Uh, so we did that the next time we were looking for a calling. Um, today, the original vision of the EPC is becoming more fully a reality every year, quite honestly. And so thank you for this great honor, friends. Um, while pastoring my church well... Uh, I hope I will seek to work on all of our behalf toward a tri transformational movement of congregations that are Reformed, Evangelical, Presbyterian, and missional. Thank you again for this great honor. I'd like to um, ask John Adamson if he would come forward to... I pray Ed's going to do for that. us if or Ed's going to come and pray. And uh, those who I'm um, from from Lake Forest, if you all would make your way up here, let's lay hands on Mike and uh, and pray for him. So those folks from Lake Forest and others, please come and let's or the Mid Atlantic. You want the Mid Atlantic Presbytery? We'll take anybody we can get. Yeah, we'll take anybody out there right now. <laughs> Let's pray together, and if you uh, feel comfortable doing so, uh, raise your hand and uh, let's bless Mike as we pray. Our Father, we thank you for blessing us with godly leadership. Lord, our story is full of godly people that you have raised up for the right place and the right time with exactly the right gifts. And Father, we know and we trust that you have done so again. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you have prepared Mike in so many ways for this, uh, these next three years. Lord, continue to prepare him. Lord, give him open eyes to see what you are doing. Lord, may his heart be the heart of a disciple that listens to your voice and speaks your words. Lord, bless him with your Holy Spirit. Fill him and use him as your ambassador to the EPC and even beyond in these next years. Lord, give him wisdom as he moderates the assembly. Give him wisdom as he leads the committee on administration. And Father, bless him with your Holy Spirit. Fill him. Preserve him. And Lord, we pray for his family and his church. We thank you for their generosity in giving him to the larger church for these three years. Lord, we thank you for that sacrificial gift. Lord, bless and care for his family as he takes on these new responsibilities. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we know that you will prepare and guide Mike as he leads this denomination. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 